Hi guys, Liam from Wargamer Online here, and today we're going to be doing a Wargog Prophet tutorial for my Bone Splitters army. Um, this will give you all the basics for the skin, robes or other projects, and squigs if you're doing a nice Night Goblin army. Um, it's all quite easy, it's mainly contrast, and it's relatively easy to batch paint all of this to be fair. So let's get straight into the tutorial. Wargamer Applied, the hope of Wargaming. Okay then guys, step one of tutorial of the Wargog Prophet. We're going to be using Orc Flesh to actually get down all the um, colours onto the actual skin for the shade and the um, highlight. But it's not going to be the final highlight, we're going to be going over this with some more layers. So let's get stuck in. Okay, what we want to be doing is getting all this um, orc flesh onto actually all the um, skin here. Like I said a moment ago, um, don't need a lot of it, just enough to get in all the recesses and all over the skin. This is literally just going to be a base layer and we are going to be go, going over it so you can be as messy as you like in this circumstance. So let's just get under there, get all the belly, get all in there. We are going to be going over this later on. So as I said, it doesn't need to be neat. Just need to get all in there. Okay, once all the orc flesh is applied to the model, we are going on to the next base coat stage. We're going to be doing the um, robes or the cloak with all the scales on top, and we're going to be using Arkelian green contrast. And um, we're going to be using our wash brush for the main bulk of this, and then we get into all the nooks and crannies, we're going to be using a small airbrush to make sure it doesn't go over to that green which we laid on before. So let's get started then. Get it on the palette, apply it to the palette, get a little bit of control. We will probably end up having to do two layers of this for the effect that I desire. A deep, nice, dark turquoise. Um, those of you who've seen my um, uh, Iron Jaws Orcs have seen my more Crusher hopefully and it's gone through the same process of these scales so I applied three um, thick coats of this Arkelian green onto the scales and I dry brushed it later on we're going to be using a different process on these scales because um, I want these to stand out a little bit more Make sure to be extra careful going near the green. As you can see, I've finished applying the first layer of Arcolian green to the um, scaled cloak, and we will be doing another layer over this to get the desired effect. But as you can see, it's all over the model, and it's already starting to look a nice contrast to that orc flat. Okay, then, guys, for the next step, we're going to be using Saigor Brown on all the wood to get that nice base coat done for all the layers and everything for the future. Let's get stuck in. I'm using a medium layer brush to apply this just so I've got a lot more control on all the wood. Okay then guys, for the next step we're going to be tidying up all of the um, bone and everywhere that we've gone over with our um, contrast and tidying them up like these feathers down here and the skull up here for future contrast. Uh, contrast sorry. We'll tidy it up so we can get another contrast over to this. Okay, then, guys, the next step we'll be doing the feathers. I'm going to be using two contrast colours for this, starting with the Andan yellow, and then I'm going to be going into a Magos purple to make these feathers really pop and have the different tones between them. So let's get started. I'm going to use the um, Yandan yellow first. Apply this with a medium layer again. Okay, then, guys, with the Yandan yellow contrast laid on, we're going to be going to the Magos purple now for the feathers. Get that nice purple layer on there for contrast. Start from the back.
Now I will be basing the stone shiv on the actual Urgo Prophet. I'm going to be using Skaven Blight Dinge here, and I'll be using the medium layer again for this process. I'm now going to be doing the base for the actual skeletons and all the bones on this Wurgod Prophet. I'm using Skeleton Horde Contrast to do this. I'm just going to do as thick as I can. Get nice contrasting dark shadows on all of these bones. Next stage on the scaly cloak, I'm going to be dry brushing with Temple Guard Blue on all these areas to brighten them up and do a final highlight. Just lightly do it all over. Okay, guys. I'm going to be doing a 50-50 mix of Iron Hand Steel base with a Skaven Blight Dinge base to try and get a dry brush onto this, bo uh, in this stone shiv and try and make it real with the shine on it as if it's actually got metal ores in the shiv, for example. Just dry brushing that all over, a little bit more, making it metallic and actually look like a stone. Seems to be working. Yep, excellent. It's got the aesthetic that we need. Okay then guys, now we're going to be going back to the skin and layering over with warp stone glow as you can see down there, if I can point out correctly. We're going to be layering over this and getting good control over all the skin for the final highlight. With this, you just want to pick out all the raised areas that haven't got an even coat of the um, wire flesh contrast, and then this is going to be a nice beginning of the highlights. Just want to Pull it out as much as you can, also. Nice solid coat of green. The important thing about this is not to get rid of all the shadows and stuff left from the actual um, contrast stage. You want to keep it, but then bring out all the raised areas. So it's a layer sort. It's like a sort of recess wash that you've done with the contrast. You don't want to get rid of any of those shadows, and you want to keep them the final part of the model. The next step will be layering all the um, wood and all the mask on the um, Wurgo Prophet with Tuscor Fur from GW. Let's just get this pot up for you so you can get it if you don't have it. There we go, Tuscor Fur layer. I'm just going to be trying to get some stripes and make this look um, like normal wood that you see it in nature much as possible. want to make it streaky. That's the one goal of this, to make it look like natural wood. So natural wood's got all that nice streaks going down it. It's completely random. You can see it so far and it's coming out pretty well. So the first layer for the um, wood to highlight it was the Tuscal Fur. The next layer is going to be Scrag Brown. Here we go. It's the layer. So we're just going to layer this on top. Try and get some different um, wood tones and textures in there. Let's make it look real. You know the business, guys. Still want it to be streaky, but we want some of that darker wood to through as well. On to the final layer of highlighting all the wood. We're going to be using Bane Blade Brown here. Let me just clump up the pot for you. There we go. I'm going to be using this layer to get all the dried up wood effects on this actual Wurgog mask and the knife and the staff. Let's just get a nice bit of it on there. Remember to thin down your paints. Wise words of Mr. Duncan. Let's just get straight in. That's my dog in the background. Obviously, he's um, sensed prey. 
on the prowl. So it's probably going to be barking a little bit from this bit. But that's fine. Everybody loves my dog. Especially me. Next step, we'll be layering the skin. So we're going to be using Scarsnick Green Layer for this, GW range. And just want to try and do a similar effect with what we did with the um, streaking of the wood. But with the um, Scarsnick Green on the Warp, stone, warp Lightning Cloud. Now that the skin has had its final highlight on, we're going to be doing some tattoos all over the model to make it pop for that burning tattoos look for the Drakfoot War Clan. So now I'm just going to be using Mephiston Red base coat to get all the starts of the tattoos done. You can see it's going in very select areas. Like so. It's not going to stand out much as Mephiston Red on the camera yet, but um, basically we're just getting this as a base coat for the brighter red later on down the line. Um, I'm just going to get all this Mephiston Red right here. You can see here basically, I've already done it. I'm going to get this all done and then I'll bring you the aftermath. After we did the Mephiston Red, we layered on top of all of that with a highlight of Wild Rider Red as you can see down there. And then we did a small layer of um, Luganef Orange and all the brighter areas, a so lot of the eyes, for example, there. Um, we used the same process as we did for the skin for this part, and we used an Army Painter uh, Master Class brush. Or um, this is similar to the GW's Extra Small Artifice, Artificer Layer brush. Okay, guys, for the base of my um, Wurgod Prophet, I used some cork right here, and I used some sand. I glued that down to the base real tight, and then I covered it in the um, Wraithbone Contrast Spray. And the basing's pretty easy. We literally just use Saigor Brown, layered on there really thickly, to get that brown effect. And then we dry brush up with Best go Flash. Now with my um, basing scheme, I'm going to be adding snow on this afterwards. But this works with anything. You can throw tufts on there, just do this, you can throw blood on there, you can do anything with it. Um, same uh, process with anything really. You can even go over desert base by using um, Skeleton Horde, for example. Um, it's just the beauty of contrast really. You can do any base to any tone that you want for any um, basing style. Um, but I'm not going to be showing you that today because it's a long effort for all this to dry and the base is already done for you. But you can see a side by side comparison of before and after. This next step is going to be finishing off the squig and making this all nice and squiggly. Um, I'm going to be using Wild Rider Red from earlier to get a nice skin tone over this. And we're just going to get a nice even coat all over the model. Okay guys, the next step on the squig. We're going to be using um, Contrast Nazar Nazdreg Yellow. So this is going to be the dirty yellow from the GW Contrast range. I'm just going to put this all over the squig. It's going to act as um, a wash to dirty it down and give it a different tone really. To make it not like a normal sort of orange in the wild. Instead of being a fluorescent orange ball of death known as a squig. So... Just get this all over. Like so. And then let's wait for this to dry. So guys, after I did the um, Nazarite, Nazdreg yellow contrast um, and it dried, I went over the teeth with Rakar Flesh and the eyes of Rakar Flesh. And then I highlighted the eyes afterwards with a Fire Dragon Bright. And then after I did that, I covered both areas of the eyes and the teeth with a skeleton horde contrast. Now I'm going to wait for this to dry, highlight the teeth, and then I'll stick this little bugger to his base. Let's get into this. Hi guys, and this is the um, final product of our tutorial. After we used the skeleton horde on the squig over here, um, we then highlighted with wraith bone on the teeth. Then once that was finished, we stuck both models, got them both off their cork stands that used for paint, stuck them onto the base, 
put snow on it to make it look as neat as possible and that will be our tutorial i hope this tutorial has been really handy for you guys um i know it's going to be handy for me if i ever forget the color scheme um so i could just go back to this but um yeah cheers folks catch you next time on more gamer online don't forget to like subscribe and follow us